Hello, assalamu alaikum. My name is Terrence. I am an American raised in California and raised as a Christian. And in this video, I wanna talk about how I accepted Islam and came to the point to where I took Hashadu. Uh, um, there's two major points in my life which led me to accepting Islam. One is in 2015 when I used to live in China. I was living in China, going to university, learning Chinese. And more so recently, uh, the end of 2018 and into 2019, I was in Mombasa, Kenya. I just looked, it's actually been 40 days today since I took Hashadu, uh, which was March 1st. Today is April the 9th, you know, in English. Uh, so to start off my story, back in China, like I said, I was there and I was going for school, literally just to learn Chinese. And I was in this situation where my classmates were from all over the world. And several of those classmates were actually Muslim. And I remember even at the beginning of the semester, before meeting these people, we all had to get in front of the room, introduce ourselves. And there was a one young man by the name of Osama. He got up, he introduced himself, and he said he's from Saudi Arabia. Well, living in Saudi Arabia, but he's actually from Yemen. And it was funny because my thought process was like, there's somebody named Osama here, this guy. Because being an American, the only Osama I've ever heard of is Osama bin Laden. I was like, watch out for that guy. You know, you don't, you know, no, he might be thinking something crazy. I'm going to blow everything up. I'm going to take it. all the classmates out if they don't teach them good Chinese. It's funny. It's funny that my thought process was like that. This is like the beginning of the semester, though. As time progressed, like maybe some weeks, you know, a month, etc., I actually met him personally. Again, he's from Yemen, originally from Yemen, but because of the problems in Yemen, living in Saudi Arabia. After I started meeting him and also his other friends from the same area, I was like, I was like surprised because the people are actually nice. They were very nice to me, like very nice. Coming from an American background, people with like good, pure manners, you know, wholesomeness to themselves. It's like, it stands out a lot. But like, I'll be walking by, those guys will always say hi to me when they would see me. They're always like, even if I just like wanted to go over and say something to Osama, all of his friends would come around me also, ask me questions, like really embrace me, ask me where I'm from. I'm, you know, I let them know I'm from America. I notice these guys aren't getting mad. They ask me what my religion is. I tell them Christian. They're not getting mad again. It was like really going against what I had been taught or programmed in my upbringing in my upbringing to make this a little bit more brief throughout that semester in china four years ago i really like spent a lot of time with these guys and they helped me a lot while spending time with them there would be there would be times where they would just know it's time to perform prayer and when they would pray, you know, sometimes I would be there. We'd be in like the dorm room or something and I would just be there. And they always like made sure I felt comfortable and had my own space. And then they would go and, and pray in, in a part of the room. And I also remember at that point, when I, when I first witnessed this prayer, 
I was thinking like, like I was surprised again because from what I've been taught, what they were doing was supposed to be something of the enemy, something of shaitan, something of Satan. So seeing four or five guys doing this, you know, speaking in Arabic, bowing down, coming back up, bowing down again. In my opinion, I sh there should be some type of demonic energy around. There should be some type of, you know, demons. As a Christian, you know, there's times where, where we, you know, battle with satanic forces, where we have to use authority as members of the kingdom of heaven and stand our ground and not let the enemy guide us in another direction. So all in all, that time in Hangzhou, China, meeting these guys, these Arabs, seeing how they practice their religion, seeing that they have a lot of love, a lot of kindness, that actually like influenced me. I didn't take a shadow back then. I didn't like just say I'm gonna become Muslim just off of that. But I did like become curious and become like more open-minded to that, to the faith. And then they like, it, it was just so much. I remember I read uh, al Fatiha back in those days and I was like, if this is what they're praying, they're praying something very, very pure. Like these words here seem perfectly okay. Even as a Christian, al Fatiha, that's like very pure things to say to the Lord. Allah. Fast forwarding, came back from China and was just kind of living a regular life. Like, a, you know, doing your life, still a believer as a Christian. But my faith was, it was like at more at a standstill point. I wasn't going to church on a Sunday because... I know that Sunday, that whole act of Christians going to church on Sundays, actually, it came from like Rome, right? A pagan ritual, worship of the sun. And it's also breaking the Sabbath, which Yahud knows about, while Muslimin, Jewish and, and Muslim people both know about. The Sabbath, an important time in the sight of, in the, sight of the Lord. So I wasn't going to church and... I would pray, but I felt like there wasn't a lot of life and light in my, my prayer life. I felt like it was very forced when I would pray, or I would only pray when I felt like I needed help. And it was, you know, it's still good to acknowledge the Lord and pray when you, you know, pray when you can. But I felt like I was at a standstill because at an earlier time in my life, I had a very productive prayer life as a Christian with a lot of light and I really felt connected to the Lord himself. Eventually, this is now 2018, going into 2019. I end up going to Mombasa, Kenya. Before I move to the next part of my actual story, I want to say that there were a lot of things that from my own background, I had never heard or known about Islam. Like, I didn't know that Allah is also, is also the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ibrahim, Isaac, Jacob. I didn't know that the God of the Jews, and the God of the Christians. Muslim believe in Jesus as a servant of the Lord, as somebody sent by the Lord, born of a miracle birth, just like Christians believe. Muslims believe Jesus is the Messiah. This is like very important, like really important. When I started seeing that, and that... They also believe in, you know, scriptures, speaking scriptures, prayer, worship, praise. 
They believe that the Lord, Ahana, Allah, Subhanu, Wa Ta'ala, Allah is seated, seated on his throne with cherubim around him, really powerful angels. These types of things were eye-opening for me. There's so much misinformation and fitna about the faith, about Islam, because of the work of the enemy. Learning a lot of those things, like the link between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, learning those things really did assist and propel myself in my transition. And when I got into reading that Quran, I was like, this is basically in line with all the scriptures that I've read before. And it says that in the Quran that this is a remembrance for the people of the scripture. Firstly, Jews, then Christians. And I'm like, what? The Quran is actually written for, you know, for or the original believers or older believers. Not to take anything away from the Ummah uh, Muslims that we have today who are born Muslim. So more so recently, I decided to go visit some of my friends in Africa. As I said, I used to live in China. While I was there, I had friends from all over the world. And I got really close with uh, people from Kenya, Mombasa, Kenya. I would hang out with them every day. We'd go out together, hang out at school, hang out in the dorm together. Cool guys, genuine. And it was nice for me as a black person from America to hang out with Africans for the first time. These guys invited me to their country. And it took me three or four years to make the trip out there. I go to Mombasa. In Mombasa, it's like a Muslim population. I think over 90% Muslim. I didn't go for any religious reason. I went literally for vacation because the job that I was working in America was very physically demanding. I was like tired and I felt like taking a trip would just be, you know, good for my soul, my spirit. And I went. When I get to Mombasa, now, there's Muslim people all around me. And I'm really being able to see the, the culture firsthand. I'm really being able to see how Muslim people live together, you know, in a community. Some of the first things that were like, stood out to me was the Adan. You know, at different prayer times throughout the day. You hear this Adan, it's in Arabic. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just be sitting there and start hearing this, you know. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And I would, I'll just be like, what is going on? Eventually, I started learning or seeing that this is a call to prayer. This is to let the people who are around know it's time to pray. You know, regardless if it's Fajr, really early in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, they're going. Dord at noontime. Uh, hmm. Asr, Maghrib, Isha. It's been 40 days, you know. <laughs> uh, excuse me. So that a thon. And then also, I've already been exposed to how nice Muslim people are. But then it got doubled up because now I'm meeting all these new people through my friends and I'm seeing again all the love and like the brotherhood between between them. And it was really like impressing, impressing my heart. At the same time, I was uh, the place I was staying, I was staying with uh, some Christians, actually. 
in an Airbnb, very nice people. And we were even going to church on Sundays. But about one month in Mombasa, I was there for three months. About one month in, I was like not feeling too well on the inside. For, for some reason, I just, I felt like it was spiritual. I felt like spiritually still. I didn't quite know what was going on with me, but I knew on the inside, like, ah, I wasn't really feeling like healthy and alive. And I remember it, one night in particular, while, while I was feeling like this, I went and got an ice cream at an ice cream shop in Niali. It's an area in Mombasa in Kenya. And at the counter, there was a pamphlet. The pamphlet read, Do you know Muslims love Jesus? I pick up that pamphlet, begin to read it, and I was like very surprised by the perspective in there. And I kind of, I took it as a sign that right in the middle of me feeling like really spiritually out of it, spirit, spiritually weak, I don't want to say spiritually dead, right in the middle of feeling like that, I come across this pamphlet. I did take it as a sign. So from there, I kind of got the idea of what if I, what if I'm actually supposed to embrace Islam while I'm here in Africa? I kept it to myself for some time. Eventually, after maybe a week or two, I asked one of my friends how I become Muslim. And that guy was like, he was like really surprised. Um, you know, he, he told me some things, etc. And I just like kept asking different Muslim people, you know, about the faith, you know, ask one person how to take Salah, ask one person, what does Islam say about this part of history or these people group? I was just getting a lot of information. But most importantly, what happened is I read the Quran. I chose to read Quran because there's no way that I should have all these questions about the faith and even be considering embracing the religion and not know what's in those scriptures. So I took one month and I read the entire Quran within the month. Really to see for myself, what do Muslim people believe? As I was reading the Quran, I'm really seeing that this is the same religion that I already had. Except it's cleaned up from all of those impurities that came through the Romans and the Greeks. And this is all one religion, as it says in Quran. So after, you know, after some time, I say another month, um, January passed, and in February, I read Quran. After this time, then I said, okay, it's time to take Hashadu. Well, it's time to become Muslim. <laughs> and the date that I chose is uh, March 1st. It was Juma, the beginning of a new month. I said March 1st is, is a good time. Uh, subhanallah, I had, you know, my friends to help me out, take me to mosque. They gave me a kanzu. And I learned on Google how to say hashadu. And we went and, and did it. And wow. Everybody was just telling me, you know, I look different now. I have a different light about me. And it was it was actually like just really a really a peaceful time. Uh all in all, that's my testimony. It's been 40 days. 
today. I'm back in California now, and it's my responsibility to continue practicing. There's no a, a Don here. I don't have people around me who are Muslim. Hopefully I'll find some people, inshallah. And yeah, I make this video to, you know, encourage anybody. Maybe you're already Muslim and you just want to be encouraged by seeing how Islam has affected another life. Subhanallah. May, who, who knows who'll see this video? But thanks be to the Almighty and thank you for for watching this here video. Masalam, assalamu alaikum, peace.